So he's going to get a motor for that and a control board just in case. So right now we are on to the next call. Let's see what we got. We have a brand new installed unit here. They just installed it. It was working fine up till now, about a week or so later. All right, good enough. Let's go on to the next call. Okay, this next one here, we're doing a pump down. I just killed it. We're gonna change the TXV on it. The guy bought uh, used equipment and uh, now he's having problems with it because it's not the right uh, TXV on it. It's a uh, low temp. TXV uh, on a medium temp application. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we're heading to the next call here. It's the first AEM. It's our sales guy. So we're going to see what's going on with this air conditioner. It uh, didn't work this morning. He got up and it was like 77 degrees in the house. And he didn't have time to miss with the head calls he had to run to and said, hey, just come out and get it fixed. So, yeah, let's see what we got going on here. Tomorrow's 4th of July. Yeah, tomorrow's 4th of July. Not gonna have anything to record on Thursday. Gotta work on Friday. Let's see what we can find out here. Ready? Let's go. All right, so we're here. Let's see if we can uh, find out what's going on. Of course, wife's asleep. So they gave me a code to get in the door. There's a foot of water in here. That's not good. Oh, yeah. Hey, HVAC guy. You were complaining about the roof having water on it? Check out the sub pump. Mm hmm. Uh, we got problems, but. Nice. Okay, so the farmer cut one of his tiles off. And I don't know if it's backing up because of it or what, but he said just give it a kick, which I gave it a kick. And uh, it's on, but you can see how high that thing is. So uh, chances are I'm probably just gonna take off because there's he's gonna just get a motor or something for it if he needs to. But he's running a sub pump out here to the something tank to just kind of get it away. May not be continued. So he's gonna get a motor for that and a control board just in case. So right now we are on to the next call. Let's see what we got here. We have a brand new installed unit here. They just installed it. It was working fine up till now, about a week or so later. The thermostat's mounted down in a closet with a remote sensor. I believe the sensor's in the return air duct. So if the fan was turned off, that would not allow it to sense temperature. So let's check it over here, see what we got. Looks like they rehooked to the existing drain line. That's scary. Okay, so we got this Malimo on here. This is another one of Carrier's economizer deals. They decided to switch around to another brand type crap. Um, looks like something maybe either been wrong with the plug or maybe that's how it's done. Once again, didn't do any of these yet, but it looks like it's hooked up. I'm gonna wire tie it up a little bit better so they don't get down in the gears and come undone. That'll keep it from falling down into the damper. Because a lot of times, if we have the installer start this stuff up, they don't really know how to set the economizer up. And it may not have got set up right. We've got some funky monkey type of sensor here. I remember back in the day when, you know, they pick one brand and, you know, you stick with it instead of trying to learn 16 different things. Between the Siemens and this Blimo, you gotta love it. Wow, it's just complain city here. I mean, that's how that hooks together. Right there, you got thin sheet metal. You're gonna hook this screws on it to hold it in place, and they're gonna take these out every so often. That's how they're gonna hold that in there. Are you supposed to not have to take this out? I mean, what's the story here? It'd be better off to go through the side. That, that right there already is stripped out. Put that on the side. Made my new holes here, which is ridiculous. Shouldn't have to do it on a brand new unit. But when you look through there, and there's nothing for it to grip onto, 
how is that supposed to work? Unbelievable. So let's go over here and look at this wiring. I'm gonna hook R to G. Oh, look at that damper stuck, it says. So is that why it didn't run? It tried to go into, man, oh man, look at all these freaking wires. Look at that. Here we go again. Let's spend all day trying to figure this out. Yeah, that's not gonna leak. valves on it's not that's nice how'd you start it without it making sure that it was turned on come on man all right so i found the book and it's windier than hell out here you can see how fast it's blowing and the wind is just blowing everything everywhere i can't even hardly hold on to it It'd be great to be able to just leave it set there but instead it's that's what i've got to deal with after that last video i did where the economizer was not working right Kind of learned how to look at that that's probably not right kind of learned how to tear into it a little quicker so we got our things here well we got a piece of tape there what's that doing what do we got going on here yeah look at that Look at that tape. Got freaking tape in there. How was this ever started? So what the air conditioner probably did is it tried to, come on, it was cold, because this morning it was probably cooler. Could have possibly been calling for it and it didn't let it run. Then the economizer locked out. I suspect we can either put it into a test mode possibly. I was really hoping it'd have a press release button that would have released the tension on the damper motor so you can move it, but this is a cheaper damper they're using here compared to their usual Blemo. Blemo usually is good stuff, but that, that one there is one of their cheaper dampers. All right, I hit the I button, and now it said it was verifying damper is stuck. I thought it was going to actually work. Verifying it can move. Can it verify it? Let's go over here and look. I'm gonna have to probably loosen that stupid thing up so that I can do this. Unbelievable. Supply air. Outdoor air, that's cool. Turn air. You're saying it's 57 degrees inside the building? I don't think that's true. Damper position zero. It's actually don't look too bad. I kind of like it so far. Definitely better than that Siemens piece of trash. I believe I've got it into a test, but that position's not changing. Not seeing anything changing here. Oops, oh, go backwards, here we go. They're 100%, okay, enter. Let's see if it does it. Not seeing a turn yet. Looks like the easiest thing to do, since it's all screwed together with screws, just take it apart, see if it moves freely which this part does seem to move freely. But as you can see, this is not turning. Okay, there's a little lip there that's not tore. So that tells me that wasn't in the right spot. And then there's one, yep, right here. That wasn't obviously in the right spot because the, the ledge of the feet come in here like that right there. Same thing here, and it comes out to the front. So that's supposed to connect to that right there. Square dust tolerance, oh, you're allowed a 16th to a 32nd of an inch. That's what it says here, 32nd. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That would probably require you to know how to use a tape measure. Okay, you've gotta get those edge corners. I can't show you because you can't see it. Down there in that bottom. see it on the paper so we've got it in there there's an edge inside here that you have to go in and down notice it now look at that it looks uniformed all the way all the way down see a little hole right there yeah we're gonna use that one and then uh 
you can see this one right here lines up. That one don't. That was the old one. So we're gonna go with those there and then look. It opens and closes okay now. Then we'll put this thing here back in, which is gonna be probably difficult to get the bracket back in. But we'll have to match that up once it's into whatever position it's in. Oh, I love working for carrier. Four screws in it. I'm not gonna mess with the middle. Opens and closes. So we'll take it all the way to closed position and we'll see if we can get this See if we get this stupid thing to run. I, I had to turn the fan off G and Y so it would shut off because it's just sucking all this warm air out here into the building, which is, you know, really great. So go ahead and pop that on there like it was. Obviously that's the only way it can go. And then get your dampers closed all the way. Hook your wheel there into that hole. And then that'll slide over into there when you have two hands to do it and then screw it back together. But before we do that, let's look at this. So for that to open, it needs to go that direction, okay? That means it needs to go that way. See what I'm saying? Gotta push, push. So that means it needs to go counterclockwise. Guess what, when you look at the setting down here, according to that, we're going clockwise. I need to go counterclockwise. Let's try switching that switch around and see if it works better. Okay, all you gotta do, just flip the switch. You hear a little bit of a click. There you go. But, you know, I don't know if the economizer's working now because actually I told it to close. So let's go to open. So hit enter, go to backwards, there's 100. Tell it to open now. Will it open without it receiving a Y1 and all that? Probably not. Nope. So you gotta run the blower to make the building too hot to see if it'll work. Loving it. So let's trim up some of these wires that somebody left about an inch long. And this one here, I mean, there's no reason for it to be that long. That's just asking for it to get into one of those resistors on the board and shorten something out. Okay, we got that on there. Let's see if it responds now. It does not look like it's responding. So we go over here to red and black and nothing. Polarities are backwards here, just so you know. Get 0.5, put it on DC, get 1.6. And in theory, that should be negative. See that? Yeah, because I have red on black, black on red. So we don't even have 24 volts to, to it, which, I wonder if this suffers from the same issue I had on the last one, where it has a plug in the middle that needs to be plugged together that they don't tell you anything about. I killed power to it. That's the blower motor. The other one had a weird wire that was kind of up in here, but this totally different. Air to temperature. So this is the one that was kind of left hanging and dangling the last time. On that other one I did a few weeks ago. Can't wait till these start going bad. Yeah, I think you're gonna stock these on your truck. Kind of working our way through here. Check the actuator drive located direction here. So they want it to be going to the, make sure the switch is located on the counterclockwise pointed up position as shown here, which can't really tell what that is, but warning, if it's not in the correct position, actuator will drive the wrong direction. Yeah, now here's a plug that's not here for some reason. Remember, save that jumper. Counterclockwise, point it up. Let's go ahead and change that. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to mark that. Here's another thing too. They recommend a two-stage thermostat because that's how you push it into mechanical cooling. And it's not gonna do that otherwise. We do have one conductor left over, hopefully. Hopefully, the installers actually ran new wire all the way down. So we've got a brown wire here that I could use as Y2. I'm gonna go down and see if there's a brown wire at the thermostat and hook that up. That will help out some. So if it, for some reason, doesn't think it needs it and it tries to do regular crappy uh, economizing for free cooling and mild temperatures, this will force it into mechanical. Okay, it comes down to here. Good. 
So hook that underneath Y2. That will fix that issue. And I already programmed thermostat to a two stage because I wasn't sure if it was two stage or not, but it ain't gonna hurt to have it programmed as two stage. Okay, got that on there. This is a T49 thin star. We use these for a lot of them. T4900. It's a pretty good little stat. It's got a lot of freaking options that most of them don't have, and it's pretty well priced. So now we got that on there, which originally I got here. I thought the controller wasn't on all the way. Okay, make sure that's locked in there. You can add humidity, you can add wireless Wi Fi stuff to it. You just pick modules you want and add it to it. Pretty decent little stat, honestly. There it is. Yep. Okay, let's look at this here. Note the orientation of the plugs. Red letters, point, 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 point. From the zip controller, from the unit. Blue, blue. Red, red. Blue, red. Red, blue. Huh. Wonder what's happening here, bud. I don't like reading instructions, but my God, this is pretty brain dead. This is a hell of a lot easier than that piece of crap they had on the other one. All right, let's fix that. There we go. Blue, blue, red, red. And then this here. Blue, blue, red, red. So let's make sure that's correct there. Because there's two different ones here. Blue to blue. There's another one. That one's different. See how there's more? There's like 10 wires or whatever there. Here's the other one. Notice how it has a big gap there. Notice how the red still matches up even though it's got a gap. See how a gap, the red matches up. See the gap, matches up. No gap here, matches up. Notice how the plug has little prongs there. Those were not lined up before. See whether or not it really damages it or not. Supplier sensor wiring. So they do want you to hook into those right there, which they look like they've got that. Things here's uh, some of the wiring for the outdoor sensor. Much better than what the other one was. Indoor fan must be running during this test to prevent compressor damage. No kidding. All right, let's go through the setup here because I don't trust, you know, gotta make sure that's right. Okay, it's palace back on. Yes, it's a generic disconnect box, but you know what, it works. Return air sensor not detected. Operating by outdoor dry bulb. That ain't good. Why do we have that? Don't know if it hurts anything or not. We're gonna unhook that fan so we can actually get some work done without blowing a bunch of warm air down there. Okay, we're going through setup stuff now. Obviously, I did some scaling. I ain't sure what that means, but obviously it's scaling, I guess. So it opens and closes now. Didn't do that before. Look at that, now it's gonna go back. So that must be what it means by scaling. We're underneath the uh, commissioning part. This definitely is a little smarter than some of them. Two current alarms hit enter. Supplier drop for contactor one insufficient. Well, that's because I unhooked the contactor so it wouldn't run the compressor, but I have no fan running. That's six minutes ago. Return air sensor not detected. Well, that's because I don't have one. So good day on that. Okay, so here's what we did. Everything as far as this stuff here is fine now that I've got it corrected, so it's working good. We no longer have the alarm. We moved the high limit for me. I went for 60, meaning it will not run the compressors below 60, okay? Coming down to live conditions, supply air, we're doing 55 degrees right now. Outdoor air still sucks and it's 86 and it's 57%. Return air still 888. That just basically means it's either shorted or whatever. CO2 is not installed. I put my damper at 13%. Compressor's on, G's on, Y1's on, Y2's on. So I asked them about the Y2. They're saying this is not programmed the same as what we're used to from the old Honeywells. I don't know if I 100% trust that. I'm still gonna go with, even though you only got one compressor, hook up Y2. I asked him under the situation, say that it is a kitchen and it's 50 to 55 degrees outside and it's raining and the humidity's high. Are you gonna run mechanical cooling? He says, no, I don't know if I believe that. There's where we're at. The big thing is I'm gonna keep my book because obviously the person who started it didn't look at it. It's got that. The damper now does work. We got everything hooked back together. 10% is what we usually run uh, unless there's a real reason to run it higher than that. It's hooked back on, everything's done there. They make Cambridge port, they build the sheet metal part and uh, they just buy the valves from Blimo. So I'm going to mark some arrows, something here, so we know that it's supposed to be that direction. It's obviously working, we're discharging the air, no alarms. 
Everything's good to go. Uh, I did just, I noticed they used the trap over because you know PVC is super expensive and it's cracked a little bit, but I took it apart and cleaned the crap out of it. See, it had crap in it, so we're okay now. Uh, the reason why they got this little extension on it is so that it brings the water out and around the curb, which I think is minuscule, being that it rains up here anyway, so what's it really matter, but you know, whatever. And it'll just get broke again if I replace it in the winter time, but it just lets it drain around the side. All right, good enough, let's go on to the next call. Okay, this next one here, we're doing a pump down. I just killed it. Pound or two, we're gonna change the TXV on it. The guy bought uh, used equipment and uh, now he's having problems with it because it's not the right uh, TXV on it. It's a low temp TXV uh, on a medium temp application. Like I said, we got her pumped down. There's no suction valve because that's all been chopped out. What we have here, I call it a build a valve. So you got an empty valve here and we put the cartridge in there, which we've got a B. The way this works, you got a cartridge here. This just goes down in the vial body here. I've already lubricated the inside O-ring, and then you get two O-rings here. Just kind of slide that in like that. Get her seated and seat itself till it gets flat to the top of that. Then you add a drop of oil to the very top edge corner there. Snug this up and then go 60 degree angle, which is equivalent to one flat edge here to that flat edge there. And then you get yourself a new valve and you size it to whatever you need. Then you attach your B cartridge uh, here that tells the next guy, hey, here's what we got. All right, this little piggy went to market, never came back. Here's what we got, we got TXV, like I said, it's, it's a low temp head. They had the bulb set right there, which is not the greatest spot. It'd be better if it's back here, but you've got multiple issues with the pipe going bigger and smaller, so there's no options. You gotta keep it where it's at. Uh, super heat was way too high originally. I opened it wide open, got as low as I could get it. All right, to make this easy on myself as possible, I'm gonna go ahead and chop this. Well, let's sweat, cut it off here in a second. There's that. There we go. This is in my way. Fixes that. Now the only thing holding this in is that right there. So we'll unsweat that, slide the new one on, get it on, cut this off the cutter, cut that off the cutter, slide them in the hole, get her dinner. Just like that, off it comes. Everything's prepped up, ready to go. Ready to get rolling here. Got water here with my rag to cool it down. Ready to go. Okay, so what I do here is I'll usually just do one section, get it in there. I'm rebracing over top of existing garbage. Got it on. These are all cleaned up. Now I'm going to slide this together and then I'll brace it again, making sure when I get it up here that I'll bend it closer so that it doesn't pop out when I heat it up. And uh, I've left the cartridge out because I don't want to burn up my rubber O-rings. Uh, this here, there's nothing special in that to worry about. It's not that hot yet. So yeah, that's about where we're at. Uh, nitrogen, not happening. Uh, no real great way to do it. We're talking one fitting versus a whole line set. I have destroyed pounds and pounds of refrigerant. There's multiple heads. I get nitrogen in there and I've just made myself a whole room of hurt. So I'm not doing that. I do on all my other ones, but not here. And like that, we got her all nice around. Put that in. I think it's already oiled it up. I'm putting that in last. You don't have to worry about taking the seals out. As that gets down there, that rod's gonna hit the plate in the spring. And uh, we'll just tighten this up here. So it snugs up and we'll put the head on. Using a six-sided wrench. I'm just gonna snug it up. We don't need to get stupid. Just a couple of squeaks, good enough. Spin the head on. Got it tightened or snugged up. Now we're gonna make that part right here. Up to about right here, 60 degrees they say. So we'll do that real quick. Just use uh, the world's greatest pliers that are flat. And the Bonco wrench here that's real thin. 
Paco fits nice and tight spots, just like that. And then we will back it up on the body with the Kinefix. All right, got her in, just pulled a vacuum on it. Uh, getting ready to pull the, uh, set the uh, superheat on it. We got her into negative. I wasn't really looking for anything great. Just mainly wanting to make sure that I didn't have any air in the system. It didn't get any moisture in it, so I'm not too worried about pulling all that craziness that we usually shoot for when you have brand new coils and stuff like that, brand new line set. See all the windmills and all that stuff. It's pretty windy. I got a lot of them out here. So let's go ahead and get this thing turned on. You can see we're in a negative here. Good deal. Pop it. Just release there on the side glass. Pressure's coming up. See where she kicks on at. Somewhere hopefully in about the 22-ish. 25, 30. Something like that. Flow temp, so it's not, or medium temp, so it's not like you gotta worry about being too crazy low, but there's that. How soon are we going into a defrost? Real soon here, it looks like. We may just go ahead and bypass that. There, we'll, that way we'll have a longer run time. Looks like they've been having to use a crap load of defrost. Whatever. Yeah, we'll sight glass so far. We had to add something last time. See what we get. So when they ran this, they didn't run large enough liquid line. Uh, I went up in the attic of this place and uh, I don't think it's getting solid liquid to it. So this is kind of the half-ass best I can do with what I have to work with type routine. And uh, yeah, all that stuff there is turbo air and stuff like that. He's had crap tons of problems out of it. But uh, like I said, they hired a company out of Indiana to do it that was cheaper. You can see how this was done. So instead of running the right size ducts and reducing properly, we just foul, you know, plate it off and there you go so, yeah go figure so anyhow uh let's go in here and see what we got going on let's see if this thing i can tune it into maybe an eight degree superheat or something well so far we're looking pretty good it's coming down a little bit it's just been on for a short duration of time but you can see we're feeding through the coil a lot better than what we did before before uh, I didn't record it, but we weren't feeding much worth of crap through that. We couldn't get it down below, I think, 25 or 30 degrees. And originally when I got here, it was like 50-some degrees. So we've got her set up pretty good so far. Pushing for maybe 8, which looks like we're already doggone close to that anyway. I'm well, probably going to be just fine right there default. We're going to let her run and stabilize for a little bit. And like I said, did what we could do with what we had to do with, 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 work, 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 you know? So a wire tie on that. Um, I do got that tag on there, which tells you what, that, what cartridge it has in there. Put that uh, wire tie on there, and then I made some room here so you can actually get your wrenches in here to actually work on it. Okay, we're at nine. They keep opening the door and letting all this heat in from where they're cleaning the room over here. I'm gonna probably stop there. I'm gonna get too stupid have some issues because as it gets colder it'll drop. Boy this thing is pumping the heat out of course they just came out of that cooler is probably why it's hotter than normal. The uh, glass is clear. Hard to focus through that thing. So yeah not good enough. Alright so the butcher shop's done. We're back over here at the uh, flooded basement. Go down here through the outside air and entryway here. Looks like they got some big old monster party going on. So let's go in here. Let's see. 